Well, hey there, Internet. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. And I've decided to follow up last week's marathon sprint through the history of Pink Floyd before and after the wall with a look at 1982's movie adaptation of the album. So without further ado, esteemed audience one and all, I give you The Wall, the movie. <laughs> Released in 1982, and based on the 1979 Pink Floyd album of the same name, The Wall tells the tale of a depressed rock star who slides into psychosis. Cheerfully, receiving great praise from such luminaries as Siskel and Ebert, the movie was also well received by the movie-going public, at least in America. Now before we continue, I should warn you that this movie deals with some very heavy themes. Themes of depression and alienation and even features some fascist imagery. So if you're fixing to stick with this one, be ye warned, it's not an easy trek when you're scaling the wall. Meet Pink. He's a musician. One balmy evening, possibly after a drink or other pick-me-up too many, he begins to reminisce upon his life. And we're invited for the ride. And so we witness the scenes of Pink's early life including the lonely life of a fatherless lad, the dangerous games that passed for entertainment before we found our thrills in even the noble sport of pinball, and the horrors of the English school system of the 1950s. And I can tell you, school from the 1950s wasn't like today. The students didn't have mobile phones. The school didn't have computers. They didn't even have a TV on wheels. And worse... The teachers could use corporal punishment with abandon. And they did. It wasn't a good time to be a child around then. But this is Pink's dream, and he dreams of redressing the balance. Snapping ahead a few years, we see Pink struggle to relate to his wife. And of course, they spent no time on talking about emotional health in the 1950s. So we all grew up awkward and nervous around girls, and some of us joined bands to express our feelings instead. Which seems to be the case with Pink. But in the heady days of the 1970s, girls are plentiful when you're a rock star. Then again, it takes more than cheap sex when meaningful connections what you're after. And rock stars can be temperamental at the best of times. All of the emotions Pink had bottled up or tried to medicate away with whatever he could finally boil over here. And it's easy for me to say that letting out your emotions is a healthy process. But it's finding a healthy way to do it that's the challenge. And much more so back then. And so, safe behind a wall of isolation, sometime in the early 80s in a chain hotel, somewhere in America, Pink begins to slip away. And we're skipping the next couple of songs, mostly for narrative clarity, as they revisit some themes that had already been explored. And when he's found unconscious and seemingly unresponsive, a shot of adrenaline is administered. Just to keep him going through the show. <laughs> because damn the man, the show must go on. The demands of the machine have created a monster. Well, I don't know what was in that syringe, but it's certainly done his mind no good. Because on the outside now, he's imagining himself as a fascist demagogue who's setting out to rid suburban London of anything he deems undesirable. And the worst part is that art imitated life in the 1980s. And so, our protagonist puts himself on trial for the crime of feeling. It's a fantastic climax to the album and the movie, backed up by Gerald Scarf's animation. However, because YouTube... We're going to have to skip it. Now, now, don't shoot the messenger. And the sentence is to tear the wall down. And so our movie ends with a scene of the next generation cleaning up our mess. <sighs> Would that it were, eh? Anyway, that was The Wall. And no, it's not a feel-good, easy-going movie but I'm still going to put it into my house of love. 
This is definitely not some happy, clappy, infinite playlist of Hollywood prestige. It's a dark tale of a tortured artist who put his trust in a system that overwhelmed him and left him a burned out husk, surviving on drink, drugs and the anonymous adulation of stadium masses. Bob Geldof cuts a haunting figure as our protagonist, his thousand yard stare betraying so much that words never could. Though really, his is the only major performance in the entire film, because this film, and the album on which it's based, is an exploration of his psyche. So how can I decide whether it's a good or bad movie? Well, let's consider the basics. Does it tell a story? Yes. Pink never knew his father, felt smothered by his mother, had trouble relating to women, or at least the pressures of being a touring musician destroyed his marriage, to the point that he disappears inside his own mind, wanting to break out of the wall he himself erected to stop himself from being hurt. But I know of another story about how relationships can mess with our minds, and we may yet get to Evangelion in one form or another. And as it's essentially a feature length of music video for an 80 minute concept double album, it is visually striking, even as the imagery is, to my modern eyes at least, somewhat cliched, but then I'd bet that this was where these comparisons were first made. School is always difficult if you don't fit in, perhaps even if you do. Relating to the world, which wasn't easy then, may not be any easier now. And as for that non-ending, well, we didn't know what was to come next. But if I had to guess, I'd say that Pink got himself checked into either rehab or some kind of mental health concern, and stumbled his way to a half-healthy relationship with either a new love, or at least his own musical talent. And I've already given my opinion on the album last week, so go and watch that for my take. Which leads us to Gerald Scarf's animated designs. And yes, they are also striking, if gruesomely so. My favourites being the caricatured wife and the eagle that tore the countryside apart. So, it tells a story, it looks and sounds great, and it's professionally competent. But then, Universal Soldier was professionally competent. And while this movie is admittedly hard going, a gruelling 95 minutes including credits, it's also compelling enough as a cautionary tale of rock and roll excess, and the consequences of war, and the futility of walls. I don't know what you might be looking for if you watch this movie, and I don't know if you'll find it when you do. But I can recommend The Wall, the movie, for you to check out at least once, if you can stomach it. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell. And if you've got the cash to spare, consider supporting this poor one camera standing lamp bedroom setup at the crowdfunding links in the description below. Anyway, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days, great entertainment, and get in the robot, Pinky! So long, folks!